The Legal Week Private Client Forum takes place in November this year at the Villa d'Este Hotel by Lake Como in Italy. Royal Bank of Canada, RBC Wealth Management, is delighted to be the principal sponsor of the conference this year. My name is Julian Washington from RBC in London, and I'm delighted to be joined by the two conference chairs, Basil Zarinis from Sullivan Cromwell and Rupert Ticehurst from Berwyn Leighton Paisner. Uh, gentlemen, thank you for joining me. Um, I know that preparation for the conference is well underway now, and you've taken as your theme navigating through instability. I don't know how long that's been in the planning, but certainly that could hardly be more topical at the moment with the Middle East in turmoil and the recent uh, instability in Eastern Europe. Basil, how are you going to convert that into, a, into the conference theme? How will that translate into the, into the theme of the conference this year? Well, Julian, you're right. The, the instability in the world sadly has increased um, in the few months since, since we uh, decided on, on what theme we'd look at. Um, and then you think about the fact that we were just marking the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the First World War. And in the history, as you, we read about that, you, I didn't know this, you learned that many leaders, almost all leaders at the time, didn't anticipate that there could be a war because they thought it was unthinkable. There had been peace for so long in Europe. And so there was a complete lack of anticipation, which may have been what led to the, to mm. the calamity. So anticipation uh, is one of the most mm. important themes that we will look at this year at the Villa d'Este. Um, as private client, international private client lawyers, we, uh, one of our duties, obviously, is to anticipate risks for our clients and protect them against those risks and help them structure to deal with them. Those risks can be uh, as ordinary as tax, as family conflict, uh, economic issues, et cetera, and they, of course, can be much more dramatic. They can be, uh, they can involve political instability, revolution, armed conflict, kidnapping, yep. danger, et cetera. And our job is to, is to anticipate that for clients and, and help them protect against it. Now, how does the forum help us with that? Each one of our sessions is designed to focus on one or more of those risks and to identify how to, how to deal with them and how to protect against them. And we sometimes bring in outside experts. So for example, on avoiding kidnapping risk or preventing kidnapping, we'll bring in an expert who deals with that. But for the most part, uh, what we want to do, as we did last year, is, is draw on everyone who's at the Villa d'Este. You have 100 or more of the top private client lawyers from around the world. And what we want to have happen is, is end up in a roundtable discussion with those experts, with all the experts there. And in terms of your own practice, Basil, have you found that clients have been urgently reviewing their estate planning in light of um, you know, what's going on in the world at the moment, or are they battening down the hatches and waiting for things to get calmer? Um, in this period of sort of crisis in the world, I see much less battening down the hatches than I have in the past. Um, most, if not all, of our clients are very worried about the instability in the world. Some will come in and ask sort of, sort of for a health check to make sure we've done everything that should be done. Yep. Others are really focusing now on, on what, what should be done. Uh, they want protection, obviously their assets, their families, their businesses. They want flexibility to go from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Um, and they, I think more than I've ever seen before, clients understand that compliance is vital, that there are no more gray areas, sure. there's no option to, to look the other way. We've always advised they shouldn't, and now all, mm. all clients are following that. And, and leading on from that, Rupert, um, as well as all the geopolitical instability, uh, those things that Basil just mentioned, the, this new era of public registers, disclosure, information exchange, um, we're firmly in that territory now, aren't we? And, and some of the old certainties, for example, the, the old black and white division between legal tax mitigation and criminal evasion, that's really gone for many purposes. It makes one wonder if this is the toughest era ever for tax on estate planning, actually. Well, it certainly feels tough at times, but actually I think it's a, uh, I mean, if we look at it positively, it's a time of opportunity mm -hmm. um, for two reasons. I mean, first of all, you're right, the rules of the game have changed and changed radically uh, in the last five to ten years. The rules of the game now are compliance yep. and transparency. And there is a moral imperative on clients to get this right because the, the consequences of getting it wrong are sure. very severe. Uh, in extreme cases, liberty, but more 
more, more realistically, the concern that clients have is, is, a, is a damage to their reputation. Mm -hmm. So they want to get this right, and they need and value good tax planning advice actually more now than they ever have done uh, in the past. So I think there's your first opportunity. The second is that a good <coughs> tax planning lawyer is not just looking to a domestic market. Mm -hmm. This is a global market. Um, and so the opportunities in terms of the client base are, are much greater. So the advice we're giving is very different, but it's to a bigger client base. And I think the advice we give ha has a greater value to it now than it has done in the past. OK. Um, and that, that greater client base leads me on to an, another point, Basil, in that it seems to me that there's a jurisdictional flavour to all this instability. And I, I suppose I have two things in mind when I say that. First of all, the clients, um, they're increasingly coming from new countries that advisors hadn't really been looking to before, the BRIC and the Mint countries. Mm -hmm. And some of the old markets, I'm thinking of that horrible word, de-offshoreization, mm -hmm. which is going to affect uh, Russian clients. Yes. So the countries where clients are coming from is changing, but also the jurisdictions where we go to to do planning for them, um, that world is changing as well. Switzerland is the obvious example that mm -hmm. comes to mind. So I don't know, how would you, su what's the trend there? Is it new clients from new juris doing their planning in new jurisdictions? Uh, how, how, how do you see that? The, the trend I see I is clients, whether they're new clients from new jurisdictions or from the traditional jurisdictions, um, are focusing their planning more and more on the most stable and most respected jurisdictions. Again, as Rupert talked about compliance, um, transparency, all of our clients understand that they need to be in a very respected place for their planning. So we have new and, <coughs> new and traditional clients going, in our, in our experience, to the Channel Islands, Bermuda, Cayman, et cetera. Um, and in some cases, uh, where they come from countries that view askance, even those jurisdictions, uh, we've been setting up trust in England, for example, mm -hmm. English law trusts with English court jurisdiction, but of course structured so like they're the not taxed, just like the good old <laughs> days. But that's the, uh, you know, that's the stamp of approval to be an English trust. Um, people say, how about the U.S.? Isn't that respected and stable? Yes, it's respected. How stable is it from a trust perspective? I'm not sure. A lot of U.S. lawyers recommend that n international families set up trusts in Delaware or anywhere in the U.S. I generally don't. Some exceptions we do, but generally I don't. Uh, instability, the U.S. legal system is so litigious, <coughs> yeah. you don't want to insert yourself into that world. Also, the, the predictability and reliability of the U.S. tax laws is much less than it used to be. Mm -hmm. So I don't view the U.S. as a great stable place to set up trust structures right. for international families. Okay. Um, and Rupert, bringing us back to the theme, navigating through instability, it, it seems to me that that's essentially an optimistic theme in that the implication is that we'll get through current tribulation and find ourselves in calmer waters ere long. Um, uh, how will the conference help us get there? Well, I don't want to disturb you, um, <laughs> but uh, I'm a bit of a pessimist and I, I, I'm afraid I don't think there are any calm waters ahead of us. There, there will always be geopolitical instability. There will always be economic instability. Governments will always change their tax rules and tax policy. And what we've yet to see is, is the environmental instability, which I think will inevitably come in the future. So how does the conference help? Well, what you won't get at this conference is a lecture on what the law is today. What you will have is an opportunity to participate in a discussion about the future and how that future uh, will affect your clients and your ability to help them. I'm not sure whether my optimism uh, was well placed or not, but uh, it certainly seems as if we've got lots of interesting material to talk about at the conference. Basil, thank you. Rupert, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I uh, look forward to you joining us at the Legal Week Private Client Forum in November for more discussion of this interesting topic.